I'm on it. Um, that's COP26. Mm. Um, I did a few hours of research on it today and I thought I should probably touch on it because it's probably on everyone's mind. It's starting well now, probably um, UK time, probably mm. starting right about now, entry times. It goes for about two weeks. And I just wanted to give a rundown on what exactly it is. Yeah, well, some people might not know what it is, so yeah, might but, be a which good is completely fair. You know, especially now, every few months you might hear COP26. Um, so for nearly three decades, the UN has been bringing together almost every country for global summits called COPS, which stands for Conference of the Parties. So in that time, within the few decades, climate change has gone from being a fringe issue to a global priority. And this year will be the 26th annual summit, given the name COP26. So you've probably heard of the Paris Agreement, which was signed in 2015. Um, in that agreement, countries had to commit to providing national measures to cut down their carbon emissions. And those targets were called Nationally Determined Contributions, or NDCs. Now, has the Paris Agreement worked? No, not really. And they honestly knew it wouldn't. They actually put a mechanism in the document of the agreement that country signed to say that there has to be a meeting every five years to update measures based on recent evidence and how the country is going. So the commitment laid out in Paris did not come close to limiting global warming to 1.5 degrees. And the window for achieving this is obviously closing every single minute. Now, the decade after 2030 will be crucial. And as momentous as Paris was, countries must go further to keep the hope of holding temperatures rates to under five point, uh, sorry, 1.5 degrees. That's right. So they actually figured out that if we followed the Paris Agreement, we would actually result in a three degree Celsius of warming, which is which would obviously, as we can assume, disastrous. No, like no human life on this planet. Now, the current NDCs including those that have been newly submitted or revised by the US, the EU, and the UK, and more than 100 others are still inadequate. So more than 100 other nations have got NDCs that will lead us towards disaster. In fact, if we followed the NDCs currently, it would result in a 16% increase in emissions as opposed to the promise of a 45% cut. So it's definitely going the wrong way. So... COP26 is incredibly important. It's a way to correct these, this course that's not going the right way. It's, it's taken a turn for the worst from the Paris Agreement. So COP26 is there to make sure that it can get essentially turned in the right direction. So there's a lot of good news and a lot of bad news with, with COP. Obviously, when we're looking at the big emissions, countries like China. Now, the Chinese president, Xi Jinping, I can't pronounce his name, but XI Jinping, He's actually not even going. So he wasn't going to go for a long time, and now he's just he's doing a video call in. Mm. Um, that shows a lot of commitment. Shows heaps of commitment. And that's the worst thing because China, like not talking per capita, but as a nation, China's the largest in the middle. Um, so we, we, we want them to make huge change. So t China is actually a decade behind its 2060 target at the moment. <laughs> so on top of that, China has plans to increase its greenhouse gas emissions by 2030. So it's going just in the complete wrong direction. So a, a lot of these nations come, come there with different plans to reduce their emissions. So a lot of countries are looking to electric vehicles. A lot of countries are looking towards nuclear power, um, which is something I looked into a bit and I found it very confusing. So I need to have someone on the show who's, who's an expert in that field, but Essentially, it's just more energy produced in a smaller land. If you know anybody and have any suggestions. Yeah, for nuclear energy. Apparently, it is a solution that France is looking at quite quite significantly. Um, but reading up on a lot of COP26 and a lot of the news that's going on, some journalists really had me on edge reading their stuff. It was, just, it was just hilarious. I was reading this random paper. I think it was called, it was Japan Forward. That was the name of this um, paper. And I put this in quotes. Western countries are working harder toward decarbonization, but the motive is not just to prevent global warming. If anything, it is an energy, energy shift away from fossil fuels 
and an attempt to become a stronger world power through a new industrial revolution, end quote. So I read that and I thought, so you're essentially wording this and phrasing this in a way that says, if you want to reduce your carbon emissions, you are power hungry, insensitive, and you just want to monetize on a new revolution so you have power over other nations. And I just thought it was a very interesting piece of journalism. What a perspective. I just, I don't know how you can think like that. Hmm. Hey, you're leaning towards green energy. You just want to be the best of the best. Like that was the perspective of this journalist. So I just, I just found that really interesting. But yeah, that's good old Japan. Japan was on one of the lists that actually is trying to go against the IPCC. Right. Right. So a few countries, like there was a leaked document, which was, they're releasing a new, I guess, uh, edition of the IPCC report. And there was a leaked document that Greenpeace uncovered, which includes tens of thousands of comments, um, including some pretty stupid things from our good old Morrison government that rejected the findings in the IPCC report that coal needs to be phased out. Now, again, this wasn't Australia. This was a group of companies, a group of countries. I could refer to them as companies. You could. Um, it, it just pretty much means that this government is tied to fossil fuels and, yeah. and other ones like... They're in their pocket, not the other way around. The government is in their pocket. Yeah. And they're stuck. Another country that really didn't like the IPCC report is Brazil. Um, obviously, because the report mentioned being plant-based, yep. Brazil being one of the largest exporters of cattle. So a lot of this COP26 is is really one of the last straws to try to make us lean towards a good direction. I really hope it puts some perspective, like mm. shifts in some of the leaders of the world. And did we find out if they're going with a plant-based? I actually didn't find out. Ugh. No, we'll have to. Well, you know what? We'll find out soon. They might have promised it, but it might not happen. Mm. So the talk actually happens on the 12th of November. There's chats in between. So for the next monthly paradigm, we'll make sure to do some research on that yep. one. Find out for everyone. Definitely. Yeah, it's really exciting, COP26. I'm, I'm, I'm more excited than I am cynical for this. Yeah, I think it's, it's bringing so much awareness around... It's serious. It's it go is. time. Yeah. Something needs to happen and it's almost too late. Mm. So yeah. yeah, it's about bloody time. Yeah. I'm I'm really, really excited. And if the time frame works, time zone works out, I'd love to watch the actual talk, but I'm not staying up late <laughs> for it. So I hope it works out. Um, well, I'm yeah. sure it'll be. Mm. You can watch it. Saw on Instagram, Greta, I just got there. Oh, nice. Yeah, go do your thing. What a superstar. 